Looks like the dielectric is 3 8 starting at the zero mark. Okay. And then the center conductor on this one starting at the zero mark. It's quarter of an inch. You can actually make it a quarter. You don't have it's a hair over a quarter, but it'd be fine at a quarter. I'm actually just a hair long on my okay. center conductor, so a quarter inch would be fine. All right. Why did you this peel back the, the foil? Okay, the foil you uh, now I didn't purpose the, the jack the connector push the foil back. But you always want to push your uh, ground back. Always push your ground back. Um, that's just common practice. Push, for, uh, push. That's actually a, actually a common practice is to push your ground back uh, for making all connectors. And what that does is it just puts the ground in between a little circle that's inside of the connector. And when you crimp it down, it grabs that ground. Okay. So that's that's how you. All right. So we're making a SDI connection for a uh, for our camera. Um, basically, the stripper is going to get us pretty close to where we want to be on the lengths of the center conductor and the dielectric, but we're going to add a little bit of length to that after the initial strip. So basically, uh, the way it goes in, uh, you have your smaller blade towards the back, larger blade towards the front in your stripper. Uh, when we set it in, just set the end right at the edge of the stripper and then just spin it around. I don't like the little finger thing because it always I think it always makes it wobble out once we were closed all the way down pull it out there it is now on this particular one um, once again our this is our dielectric uh, from here to here the dielectric is not long enough we need to add just a little bit more to that in this case we've discovered it's three-eighths of an inch so um, you can use a tape measure to do it I've been doing it long enough to where I know it's right about there <laughs> so I'm just going to score the outside of the jacket. This is called a plenum jacket, so when scoring it will make it break away very easily. And there we go. And then uh, that's where we are. And then let's let's grab the uh, grab that ruler right there. Hang on, it just it's, it's focusing on your. Oh, it's focusing on my strip. Okay. On your, your uh, the larger. Maybe we should. Okay, that's good. Move to the table. Okay, so um, all right, you can. Okay, so so three eighths of an inch is uh, what we're looking at, and then we fold our foil back, or our uh, braid back. That's that's once again that's a typical practice of making a connector. Always fold back your braid on almost every single connector you ever make. Now there's different times on certain connectors you'd fold back on, but on this one it's it's this time. Then um, I've already pushed my pin up through. Um, then you're going to have a pin at the end of your connect down inside of your connector. This pin's already been pushed up through. Let me let's get a new one here so we can do this from scratch. I can probably make that one work later. Uh, so basically, on our connector, you can see the pin is seated down at the bottom, and uh, your center conductor seats inside of your center pin, which is going to a crimp down on top of your connector when you make your crimp connection and when you seat it down when you seat the connector down it should be just right about there and it's the, the center conductor just seated down inside of the center pin that's going to come out the end when we push it in now this is the part that's a little tricky when you push this thing in it's a little hard so you got to kind of work it down in there we always say in just in technical terms as far as making these connectors you got to use your big boy muscles to get it in <laughs> so basically uh, once you push the connector down in you can see the jacket goes right up inside there just like that and you can see the center pins starting to come through right now but we need that center pin to get all the way up here to the top so basically you push and twist and just keep pushing and twisting push and twist push and twist and we're halfway up. Push and twist, push and twist. Not easy to get up there. And there it is. And if you rub your finger across the top, you should just be able to feel that center pin just right there, just barely pre protruding past the uh, top of the connection. I mean, barely. I'm just going to make sure it's seated real good. Put one more little twist. And there it is. Now, what I like to do, not everybody does this, but I'm a fanatic about things making good connection. So I'll take a uh, I'll take a multimeter, and you put your multimeter on diode check, which in this one is right here, and it's a funny little triangle with a line on it, uh, representing a diode. 
and that's why they call it diode check. But basically, uh, a multimeter in this mode will check for a short, and that's what we want. We want a straight short between uh, this center pin and the other center pin, other end of the wire. There's two things I check for. I check for continuity between the pins, between center pin to the other end of the wire's center pin, and I check for whether or not we have a short between the center pin and the ground, which you don't want. You don't want your ground and your center pin shorting together. So the first thing I'll do is I'll touch my negative to my ground, and my ground wire is already in there, so I've got ground, and I'll touch my center pin and make sure that there's no continuity. And uh, just, if there is continuity, it'll do this. If, I, if there's a short, you'll have the zeros. It'll show short on a multimeter most of the time. And then uh, if there's, right now I know I'm not shorted to my ground. And then I'll take my other wire, let me see that other end over there. I'll try to show you a one-man method of doing this. Um, I've been doing this for a long time, so it's it's still difficult, but possible. Basically, you take your center pins and you, I just kind of hold one on one side like this. Oops, hold one on one side like this, and then touch the other side like this, and I show a short which tells me I've got a good continuity between my center pins. Once again, if I touch my ground, I'm open. So I should show nothing on ground. And if you want to be just a little bit more, uh, if you want to be a little bit more checking, I mean, you just want to check a little bit anally better, retentive. anally retentive about it, you can actually stick your, um, stick your ground down inside like that, down in your ground, and touch ground over here. And that shows me that this connector is grounded good. Okay. That the ground is my ground inside of my uh, jacket here is, is well done and I usually I will every time actually not usually every time I make one of these connectors just because they're kind of long and a little funky and you kind of got to you know do things a little different with them I always like to ch make those checks before I do my crimp once you've done your crimp that's it you're done so you want to make sure that everything's got proper continuity before you do your uh, crimp then we take our trusty dusty crimper here it is. This is a very nice one, actually. Um, um, what about the little shoes and heads and things like that? You want to make any comment? These these two right here. Oh, okay, okay. Um, well, on this one right here, you have different types of heads. Uh, of course, on this head right here, this is a head for a BNC connector. You have different types of heads you can put in there. They make a head for an RCA. This actually will do an RCA, too, because the RCA will go inside the center okay. hole. But uh, if you were just doing a regular, this actually might be a multiple a multi deal but what you want to do is this is your adjustment for the head and you want to make sure that's tight by the way make sure that's good and tight um, we want this right now it's a little bit too sucks a little bit too small I don't know if it'll go up further yeah well we're going to put it all the way up because this is a big connector and this just pops in just like that and then the it seats right inside a little ring there when you're ready to squeeze and then you just you squeeze your connector down and this is actually a compression what's called a compression fitting and this thing right here will come when I squeeze this down is going to compress onto the jacket and uh, it said now I haven't tested this area myself that it'll withstand a 60 pound pull so that's pretty hefty you'll break something before you uh, pull the jacket out of this and then you just squeeze this down until the red seats at the the, the red will seat right up against it, then you're done. You don't have to go any further. Some people will just squeeze down even further for some reason, I don't know why, but uh, I always stop at the seat. When you're done, you notice we're seated here. Let's lay it on top of that okay. so I can get a good shot while you're talking. Once you're finished, uh, you notice that the red is seated very well right here. We can look at the center conductor and see if the center conductor is protruding up just a little bit. Uh, once again, if you want to get really just anal about it, you can once again test everything. You know, put your meter on the tip of this center conductor here and on the center conductor there end to be sure everything's okay inside. Typically, after you've pushed everything up inside of there, if you test it before you crimp and then crimp, I don't think I've ever seen one mess up after a crimp, as long as it's all seated properly from the beginning. Um, so, uh, Anyway, um, that's that's pretty much it. The only the only big thing to remember in this is checking your continuity and making sure you add that little bit after you strip it with a with a razor knife or or something like that to uh, to get the proper length. 
I, I just use a razor knife for the whole thing just because it's quicker for me, but uh, the stripper will get your center conductor the proper length. How's that? Okay. Um, anything else that you can think of? It's like, oh, this happened once or... No, nah, that's it. I mean, that, that's really it. You don't have... Uh, I mean, the, the cool thing about this one is I've had other ones where that center pin's way up here. And when you start poking way up in there, you're trying to find the center pin. This one, the center pin starts down here and you can seat it and then shove it up through, which makes it a heck of a lot easier to make than some of the other ones I've done in the past. So this one, compared to ones I've done in the past, is actually one of the easier ones to make. The only problem you, you might have been having with this is you weren't making your dielectric long enough. That's, you know, once you get that dial, not knowing that that dielectric's got to be a little bit longer in order for it to seat that pin all the way up to the top, that'll get you every time. Okay. I had to figure that out. I messed up probably three or four of them when I did it the first time, too, uh, before I figured all that out.